hey, howdy, hey there. You're watching episode 34 of The Daily Decrypt, and I am your host, Amanda. Today's episode is brought to you by B&C Exchange. A competing client to Bitcoin Core, much the way Bitcoin XT is a competing client, is being offered by an organization calling itself Bitcoin Unlimited. Bitcoin Unlimited has gone above and beyond in that they have published their Articles of Federation, which outline the decision-making system and administrative hierarchy for the client. And I think that competing implementation clients for the same blockchains are very cool because they are proving a major point, which is that it is not governance or government that is a problem in the world per se but rather it is the monopoly on governance which causes problems. And competing clients like this also just go to show that Bitcoin... I, I, was, I was called an anti-government neckbeard Bitcoin lover on Reddit once. Me, a neckbeard. <laughs> and it's just so cool that cryptocurrency is proving that of course governance is needed. How else can decisions get made? But it's showing that governance models should have to compete with one another, and participation in any given governance model can and should be voluntary. Yesterday we reported that the 21 Bitcoin computer was shipping and the different things that 21 Co. was publishing that you could do with it. But some mused in the comment section on whether the $400 price tag would be worth it. An alternative option was posted in the Bitcoin subreddit today, in which Redditor Buttcoin EE posted this single line of code, which reportedly gives full 21 co capabilities to something like a $35 Raspberry Pi. Happy developing. Chris Odom presented at the recent Bitcoin Investors Conference in Las Vegas and spoke about a Bitcoin improvement proposal, namely BIP47, which he says would make blockchain analysis companies obsolete. The BIP creates what Chris calls a payment code, and this payment code functions very much like a stealth address. And I remember I was so excited when Dark Wallet was developing stealth addresses, but for whatever reason, they never took off. So individual payment codes could be given out to individuals with whom you do business and your entire transaction history with that person would not be viewable to anybody else. Whereas Bitcoin as it is today, if you were using the same address with that person every time, yes, your entire history with them would be open to the world. And so BIP47 would significantly increase privacy within Bitcoin and it was lauded today by Andreas Antonopoulos on Twitter. Hey, it's time for our first sponsored shout out. Roberts and Roberts Brokerage is a company that sells silver and gold and displays prominently on their website that they don't feed the banks and that Bitcoin is preferred. Last Armistice Day, and if you don't know what Armistice Day is, you might be surprised to look it up and find out what it is. Roberts and Roberts donated all of their profits to antiwar.com. And this Bitcoin Black Friday, they will be doing the same. So the profits from all sales at rrbi.co on November 27th will go to antiwar.com. Jamie Redman writes that Patrick Byrne, leader of overstock.com, has reported that his company has stashed $10 million worth of gold, silver, and dried food somewhere in their home region of Utah. Byrne also reports that they're supplementing their prepper stash with plenty of bitcoins as well. Byrne says, quote, I want a system that can survive a three-month freeze. If the whole thing collapses, I want our system to continue paying people so we can be able to survive a shutdown of the banking system. It would seem that Byrne, who's a former Wall Street bigwig himself, is betting on life's true regulators, that is, supply and demand making a market correction sometime in the future. Jacob Donnelly has published an article called Bitcoin Growing Up. He cites some cool milestones, so let me walk you down the memory lane he paints for us. The first block, mined by Satoshi himself, also called the Genesis block, was timestamped with this statement. The Times, the 3rd of January, 2009, Chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks. 
Fast forward five years to January 2014, and the Bitcoin network hash rate is 10 million gigahashes per second. Within just a year, it will increase to today's rate, which is 504 million gigahashes per second, making the Bitcoin network more powerful than all of the world's supercomputers combined. During that same year, average daily transactions have gone from 50,000 a day to 170,000 a day. And also during that same time, number of merchants accepting Bitcoin for payment increased by 50%, going from 65,000 to 100,000. And I bet it's probably more than 100,000 because I am a media merchant who accepts Bitcoin and I don't think I'm listed in any of these stats. The Bitcoin Magazine article comes with a lovely infographic and I encourage you to check it out if you're in the mood for some eye candy. Other than me. Today's episode has been brought to you by BNC Exchange, which is a decentralized exchange for everybody. Upon launch, BNC Exchange will be open source and have a web-based interface. And its operators will have zero access to your funds while you trade there because your funds will be on the BNC blockchain rather than on central exchange servers. Users will be able to trade with native assets like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and Peercoin rather than proxy assets which are used on some other decentralized exchanges. Visit bcexchange.org to learn more. Love, peace, and chicken grease. You never said it's a voice on the